It's day 154, 2016 and today we have news that Micromax is planning to sell in China and Uber got a massive funding from Saudi Arabia. Lots more here. This is Phone Arena Daily. Let's begin. Micromax is planning to sell in China from next year on according to a latest report from Wall Street Journal. Now, this is not the first time the company is foraying into other countries. It is currently the third largest smartphone manufacturer in Russia, which it entered earlier last year or some time back. And now it's part of the expansion plans and also a new revamped effort to take Micromax elsewhere. And China is a really interesting market because even Micromax imports a lot of these Chinese ODM phones and they brand them and sell here. Most of the phones are like that in their lineup but they also have manufacturing facilities here so they might be willing to look at new designs to sell in China and maybe create a new market there. Uber which is now the most valuable tech startup in the world has received a whopping 3.5 billion dollars of funding from none other than Saudi Arabia and this is from their sovereign wealth fund so their public investment fund manager who's named as Yasir he'll be joining the board of directors at Uber. So this is pretty significant because number one, the number is huge. It's $3.5 billion because last time Uber was funded with $2.1 billion, which was its highest. Now Uber is valued at $62.5 billion. And this investment is also significant because Uber has been operating in Saudi Arabia since 2014. And it says that 80% of its 130,000 riders are women and Saudi Arabia has a vision 2030 which pretty much says that they are moving away from oil and investing in tech. So it pretty much lines up with the whole vision of what Saudi wants to do in terms of its country. So it's that's why it's a sovereign wealth fund and that's why it's pretty important because this is the first time a country has invested in a big startup like Uber. Google has updated its now on tap feature and it now includes not just text but images too. So now you can go and select text inside any app and since it works across the platform you can just search for anything from anywhere now and this includes images. So if you are like in Instagram or inside any photography app or even inside a web browser with an image you can just press that home button and have now on tap get a query for that image. Now on tap will work now inside chat apps too. So if you're selecting text from inside WhatsApp for example you can still query that. So everything's readable now for now on tap and that's a pretty big update. So check it out if you have it and probably let us know what you think. Xiaomi has just announced the Mi Band 2 which as expected has a new display on top a 0.42 inch OLED screen which can show you steps and time and of course the heart rate because it has the heart rate sensor. Earlier the CEO had shown us what the Mi Band was like in the black version but there are multiple colors too and now they cost 149 yuan which is about 1500 rupees that's going to be the cost of the Mi Band 2. So it's pretty much expected that the Mi Band and the Mi Band 2 will coexist in different price categories. Maybe that's what Xiaomi's plan is but the battery life is definitely taking a hit this time compared to the Mi Band, I'm not saying it's bad. It's got down from 30 days of battery life to 20 days of battery life. So that's the main difference in battery life between the Mi Band and the Mi Band 2. But I wanna ask you another question generally in terms of fitness trackers and this is the point of discussion. Which fitness tracker are you using right now? And are you going to replace it with the Mi Band 2? Let us know what you think in the comment section below and that's about it for the show. Do check out the deal of the day in the description and we'll see you later with more technology news. Thanks for watching.